What's up, everybody? Happy Thursday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. It's officially the first day of November. I am not excited about it. <laughs> I'm not. I don't, I, don't, I don't care for November. I'm going to tell you that right now. I wish after October we could skip to December. I, I'm not a fan of this month. Um, so anyway, getting into this episode. So Laura is kicking Ned's ass in the polls. Not kicking his ass, but she's getting close. She just entered this race for mayor. And after two days, she's up 28% in the polls. I said, well, damn. I see why Ned is nervous. I honestly, I would be nervous too. If my opponent, who just came in on the ballot at the last minute, and they're up 28% already in two days, I'd be scared my damn self. I'd be scared if I was a candidate. Shit, if I was Ned, I'd be shaking in my boots. Because you might not get that reelect. But um, I have to agree with Olivia to an extent where she said that um, Ferncliff is, is a state-run facility. Basically, what she was trying to tell Laura and Carly is your issue is not with Ned. Your issue is with the governor. Because anything that's state-run, you have to run that past the governor. Your issue is going to be with the government, with the governor of your state, which I understand. But with Ned being the mayor and you know the conditions of that place... You have enough power to go to the governor as a mayor and get it done. Like, he got enough power to do that. Like, you could easily go to the governor, get that shit done. But you know Ned. He ain't going to do it. Ned is, I mean, I, I, I do think Ned needs to be out as mayor. I'm not going to lie. If, it, if I lived in that town, if it was a real town, I know who I would be voting for. I'd be voting for Laura. Minus the psycho husband, so she thinks. I would be definitely voting for her. I'm just, I, I would have to put it out there. Because she's like a, a politician with a conscience, basically. You know, not everything is dollars and cents. Not to say Ned is, you know, an evil person or nothing like that. But I already know, I've seen politicians or people like Ned before in real life and trust me I'm not impressed at all because honestly I feel like Ferncliff probably need to be shut down or some shit they don't use Shady Brook no more I remember on GH they used to always use Shady Brook but I haven't seen Shady Brook on this show in some years I think it's been what six seven years since we seen Shady Brook I think the last time I seen the set at Shady Brook was when Elizabeth was there. And I think that was like seven years ago. Um, But yeah, this whole mayoral thing, I like shit like this. I think it's fun. You know what I mean? Because I know who I'd be voting for, like I said. Laura, you would definitely be getting my vote. Ned, you would definitely be out back on ELQ or wherever you want to go. Um, Ava. Ava still don't ever learn. She's still sitting there eavesdropping on people's conversations, getting in people's business. Ava should have left that whole shit alone with Carly. Like, you just, you you picked a fight for what? For what purpose? Like, she's sitting there eavesdropping on Carly and Michael conversation. And, of course, her and Carly go at it where they throw insults at each other. They bring up past misdeeds. All the time, this is what they do. Oh, Ava, you killed Connie. Sonny killed AJ. We get it. We know what everybody did. It's like, this is what y'all going to keep doing? Y'all just going to keep arguing and bringing this shit up every five minutes? Um, But, of course, Carly had to threaten Ava, told him, oh, one day I'm going to get you for what you did to Maury. Carly, shut the hell up. <laughs> if you was going to get Ava, you would have been got her a long time ago. Like, I don't want to hear them little empty threats. If you're going to get her, then get her. Don't sit there talking about one day, one day my ass. If somebody would have switched my son's medication, which kind of led to his death, I'm going to get you now. I'm not going to wait till later, bitch. I'm going to get you now. You know what I'm saying? Like, all them little empty threats, oh, I'm going to get you one day. And What's one day? Why not get her now? You keep bringing up your son and what she did. Okay, get her ass now. What you waiting for? What you waiting for her to slip up? Trying to think of a good plan to get her? It shouldn't take long. I'm just saying, like, let that have been my kid. That would have been her ass that day. 
I'm just saying, fuck all that one day shit, you know, it's your ass right now. Fuck all that. And if I can't get you locked up, if I can't kill you, I'm going to beat your ass every time I see you. That's how it should be between the two of them. I mean, she switched her son's medications. You should be whooping her ass on sight every time. Every time you see this bitch, you should just, you shouldn't even say nothing to her. You should just walk up and smack her in the goddamn face every time you see the bitch. I mean, somebody switch your son's medication and you sitting there making little threats every time you see them, bringing up their past crimes. Oh, one day I'm going to get, no, 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 no. Fuck all that one day shit. I'm bust that ass every time I see you. Every time I see you, I want my fear one every fucking time. All that one day. One day my ass. Carly, you getting soft. For you to be married to a mob boss, you're getting soft. I'm just saying. Like, if you're going to be a mob wife, be a fucking mob wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't, don't with all the empty threats. It didn't remind me so much of John Gotti. I probably told this story about a million times, but I'm going to say it again. Because this, I mean, if you're going to do a mob storyline or have mob people on the show, you need to do it right. I'm just saying. Stop with all this Mickey Mouse threats and shit. Eliminate your enemy. Stop with all the threats. I'm just saying. Because empty threats, they get boring after a while. Like, when John Gotti, when his son got hit, when he was a kid, like he was riding his bike and stuff like that, and the neighbor hit him by accident with his car and he died. That neighbor went missing literally the next day. Nobody ever heard from that neighbor again. And we can all guess what happened. Um, so, yeah, it's like, come on, somebody do something to your family or your kid. There is no one day. You act on it that day. Look at John Gotti. His son died. He didn't it didn't take him long to to, to get revenge. I mean, I'm just saying, if you're going to have the mob on this show, bitch, do it right. Um, stop with all them little empty-ass threats. So, anyway, long live Mary Pat. Lord have mercy. When Cam found that, her medical, like, he found her ID on the pier. As soon as he found her ID on the pier, I said, oh, shit. Mary Pat got got. <laughs> I said, damn. So then, at the fucking fundraiser, they was bobbing for apples and shit. Laura was trying to get Ryan to do it first, but Ryan was like, nah, I gotta get back to the hospital, my sleep study. No wonder he hauled ass out of there. Because when Carly went and bobbed for apples, Carly trying to show everybody what that mouth do, she was up in there bobbing for apples. This bitch saw a head in the goddamn, in the water. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, Ryan is a sick bastard, y'all. I say, I knew that bitch was in the barrel. I knew it. I knew Mary Pat was in there. You couldn't tell me she wasn't going to be in that barrel. I knew it. I said, Ryan got to be the illest. Oh, shit. That remind me of that shit Anthony Zakaria did one time. I remember he killed that lawyer, that lady, that lawyer lady when Sonny was married to Brenda. And when Sonny and Brenda and Alec walked into his office, they saw the dead woman sitting in Sonny's office in her in his chair. That shit was funny as shit. I said, now that's some creative shit right there. If you're going to murder somebody, be creative with the shit. He stuffed that bitch in that barrel. I said, damn, he must be strong to get her ass in that barrel. Because Mary Pat, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, she wasn't no, no thin woman. No shade, I'm just saying. You know, it would have had to take me and about six other motherfuckers to get her in that barrel. <laughs> and I bet you he did it without breaking a sweat, too. <laughs> yo, Ryan is crazy, yo. He really stuffed this chick in a barrel. I said, yo. When I seen that shit, I said, this motherfucker is sick. Oh, shit. Um, well, R.I.P. Mary Pat. Um, I'm over this whole teen bullshit with Jocelyn and Cameron. I don't care nothing about that. Um, Valentine and Nina, they just need to get back together. I'm going to say it again. I, I want them back together. The head writers of this show need to make it happen. I understand it's not going to be easy, though. They're going to do it very slowly. Uh, hopefully not at turtle speed. I'm just saying we need it quickly. Not that quick, but quick. Um, like yesterday. I can understand why Nina would be suspicious of Valentine, you know, because now all of a sudden the power is out, the harbor, you know, the, the Coast Guard shut the harbor down. I said I can understand why she could be suspicious because it's not like Valentine ain't got the money or the power. You know what I'm saying? He could easily pay the Coast Guard to shut the harbor down. That's not hard to do when you got money and power. Two, he could easily cut the power out at Windermere. That's not hard to do. 
cut a line or two, have somebody cut something. You know what I'm saying? That's not hard. But I do agree with Valentino. It's not like he could, you know, he's not God. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't make, you know, weather bad on your own. You know what I'm saying? That takes the act of God. And he's not God, so you can't do that. Um, I really just want them together, though, because I like their chemistry. And besides, who else on the show want them other than the, each, you know, themselves? Ain't nobody, no man on this, on this show checking for Nina. Ain't no woman on this show checking for Valentine. So who else they going to peer y'all up with? <laughs> like, at the end of the day, they ain't got no choice but to put y'all back together because who else going to take y'all? Nobody checking for Valentine. Ain't nobody checking for Nina. So what else you going to do? Um, but I just like them though. I think the chemistry is still there. They have great. I, I just think that they they go together so well. But I could definitely understand why Nina is not taking him back so quickly because at this point Nina's trying to protect her heart. You know what I'm saying? Like he's done lot. He lied to her several times, numerous occasions. She can't trust him. You know what I mean? And once that trust is gone, it's hard to get it back. So Valentine just gonna have to work on it. Like, if you really want her back, you're just going to have to, you know, work that trust back. You know what I mean? Which is not going to be easy, but, you know, if something's worth having, it's worth fighting for. So, keep on fighting, bro. Um, I feel bad for Michael. I say that every video, but I do. Like, he is mourning the hell out of that child. Like, that was his first child, too. And he's just mourning him, though. I just wish that they would just hurry up with this storyline, like, and get it out there. Chase, they need to get him into a relationship or something because he's just basically floating around at this point. I would, you know, I don't know who they compare Chase up with. I don't know. I don't want to see him with Sasha because she's a little crazy, so no. Um, Lulu, no. Maxie, maybe. Valerie, I could definitely go with that. I mean, if they're not going to put Valerie with Christine, I could definitely see him with Valerie. Um, Most definitely. But uh, they need to do something because he just basically floating around. He's been on the show almost a year. So it's like we need to figure out what we're doing with Chase. Um, Oscar still being a little butthead. I, you know, it's funny because Laura, before I get into that, but Laura did mention that Alexis was wearing her mother's watch. And I still want to know what the fuck are they doing with this storyline? Because it just seems like they mention it here and there, but they still keep it on the back burner. And I'm trying to figure out what is the goal of this storyline with her mother and that watch? What is the end goal of it? Like, why does it keep stopping at 1010? Like, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, I'm curious as to what all of this means. Um, they got some good storylines that they just continuously put on the back burner. I don't know why. They put those storylines on the back burner for weak storylines. I don't get it. Speaking of weak, Oscar, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm over this whole thing right now. I wish we didn't have to wait till December for the trial. I wish that they could just do the trial now, you know, so we can get this over with. Um, Because his little funky attitude is starting to piss me off. And I really wish Drew would knock some sense into this boy, literally knock some sense into him. Because his attitude is atrocious. Um, Kim is annoying me. Like, she's trying to go to everybody and their mother for help. I get it. You don't want your son to die. I get it. But how do you... I, Julian made a good point. Like, how do you know that trial is even going to work? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you know that? You know, you don't know it. You don't know if that trial is going to work. And now she's thinking maybe Jocelyn could talk to him. He's not listening to Jocelyn. He doesn't even want to tell Jocelyn about it. You know what I mean? How is Jocelyn going to get him to do it if they're broken up? And she he broke up with her. He's treating her like shit. You know what I mean? Like, I understand she's desperate, but it's like you're going to the wrong people for help. None of these people can help you. So it's like, and then she's still sitting there blaming um, Alexis for taking the case. If Alexis didn't take the case, some other lawyer like Scott or maybe even Rick Lansing or whoever would have took the case. And trust me, you would have been worse off. You, you can't do no wrong with Alexis because... With Scott Baldwin or Rick Lansing, all you're going to get is media attention, a lot of negative press, and a lot of courtroom theatrics. Why would you want that? You know what I'm saying? Alexis is going to minimize that. So far, Alexis is keeping it out of the media, something Scott Baldwin wouldn't have done. This shit would have been hit the media by now. You would have had the general public turned against her and Drew 
if it was Scott Baldwin representing him. So you better be count your blessings that Alexis took the case. Even if you don't understand why she took it, she had her reasons for taking it. And I understand her reasons for taking it. It's always wonderful, though, to see Mac and Felicia. Um, I wish Felicia had a bigger part in this Ryan storyline. It's like we see her here and there, but she doesn't have a bigger say in this story. And I wish that she would. Ava need to stay the hell away from Ryan. That's all I can say. Stop being around this man. He's nuttier than a fruit bar. Stay away from him. But you know Ava. She gonna do what she do. But um, anyway, it was an okay episode today. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about it. I will see you all later. Peace.